All right, biology students, this is our first official biology lesson, so I'm excited to jump into some content. Um, where this is sort of an overview lesson, an overview to biology, and then we are going to try to answer the question, what is life? Because we know that biology is the study of life, and so the first question that we need to answer before we go any further is, what does it mean for an organism to be considered living? Before we do that, though, or answer that question, I want to give an overview of sort of how the course is going to progress this year. So this particular biology course goes from smallest to largest. So we start in unit one where we start to talk about uh, processes of life and those small molecules. Um, we'll talk about biomolecules, macromolecules. Um, then in unit two, we're going to cover cells and cell organelles and cell processes. Um, and then in unit three, we're going to talk about energetics, which is going to be where we discuss photosynthesis and cellular respiration and how organisms obtain energy. Unit four is going to cover genetics and heredity. And then in unit five, we're going to cover how organisms change over time through a process called evolution. Uh, and then unit six is our final unit for biology, and that's where we talk about how organisms interact with their communities and ecosystems and overall the biosphere. So I just wanted to show you this graphic organizer so that you kind of know how we're going to progress this year through biology and what the future holds for the course. Uh, since this is biology, let's go ahead and get down one of the most important definitions, um, which is biology. So biology is the study of all forms of life. Now that is a pretty broad category. So we're going to spend some time today talking about what it means for something to be alive. Another term that you're going to hear a lot today and throughout the course is organism. So make sure that you get down in your notes that when we refer to an organism, we are referring to any living thing. Now we're ready to determine what makes an organism living. So there are eight different criteria that have to be met in order to say an organism is alive. And so we're going to progress through these, discuss each of these, and I'll give you some examples of each of these eight characteristics of life. All right, let's start with the first one, which is organization. So the first thing that you need to know is that all living things are made up of cells. Now, this can range from very simplistic organisms like unicellular organisms or the more complicated organisms that are made up of many cells. Um, and we call these multicellular organisms. So you can see some examples there. Uh, now, these cells, we're going to learn in Unit 2, they make up tissues and then these tissues come together to form organs and then organs work together to form organ systems and then ultimately these organ systems uh, work for an organism or on behalf of the organism. Right, the second characteristic of living things is uh, that all living things have to have genetic material, uh, specifically DNA. So DNA is what we're going to discuss in Unit 4. That's our genetics unit. And we're going to learn in Unit 4 that DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Uh, and it's super important because it contains all the information that determines how we grow and develop. Uh, and if you'll notice, growth and development is also one of the characteristics of living things that we'll talk about in a couple slides. So this genetic material, or this DNA, uh, is passed from one generation to the next. So we say that it is inheritable. So again, when we talk about genetics, we'll also tie in heredity. And then I put just a little nugget of information. This will come up later, but I just want to go ahead and plant the seed here. Uh, you need to know that your genome is uh, inherited from your parents. So you receive 50% of your DNA from your mom through eggs. Uh, and then, or through an egg, and then 50% from your dad through sperm. Now, another criteria for a living organism to be considered living is that it has to be able to reproduce. Um, and when we say reproduce, we mean produce new offspring or new individuals. I do want to take a sidestep here and just answer this question because sometimes it comes up with students. 
Uh, what about a female that can't reproduce or um, an infertile male? So while you can have certain situations that um, make it difficult for a woman or a man to reproduce, we're talking about the species. So the human species can reproduce. And so even though you have examples of specific individuals that are not able to, as a whole species, um, they are able to. So we're sort of covering the whole species here when we talk about reproduction. So reproduction can happen in two ways. You can have asexual reproduction, which just requires one parent, or sexual reproduction that requires two parents. Um, and when we talk about meiosis and some other, um, some other topics throughout the course of biology, this will come back up and I'll give you some more examples and we'll elaborate on asexual and sexual reproduction. All right, the next criteria for living things is growth and development. So that inherited information or DNA that we discussed a few slides back is carried by what we call genes. And these genes control the pattern of growth and development for organisms. So what we see is cells become larger. They're going to divide and produce more cells. Uh, and so we have lots of examples of growth and development, but a really cool one is can be found on YouTube. So if you have just a second, I highly recommend you pause this video, head over to YouTube, and in the search bar, just type in time lapse of a plant. Um, there's lots of videos that will come up, and of course you can choose any one you want, but there is a really good one um, that shows a forest, and it shows a six-month time lapse of the forest. And so you can see all the organisms within the forest, how they grow and develop over the course of the six months. It's a really good example of growth and development. All right, another characteristic of living things is uh, that living things require a source of energy. Uh, we need energy in order to move and to carry out cellular processes. So while that looks different depending on the organism, uh, the same rule applies, and that rule is that we all, all living things, require energy. Um, so when we're talking about organisms like autotrophs that make their own food, such as plants, um, that process of obtaining energy comes through a process known as photosynthesis. We'll talk about that in Unit 3. Um, or if we're talking about humans that that requires energy through eating other organisms, um, that process is cellular respiration. Again, that will be something that comes up in Unit 3. Um, you can also have decomposers, such as fungi, that have to break down dead material to get their energy. But all living things do require energy. Now, another important vocabulary term you'll see at the bottom of this screen, you need to make sure that you get down in your notes. Um, all organisms must use energy to break down and build up materials in a process that we call metabolism. All living things must also respond to their environment. Now that's going to look different depending on the organism and there's some really cool uh, examples of how organisms respond to their environment, but in order to survive, living things have to respond. Uh, so again, if you have some time and you just want to do some investigation, go to YouTube and in the search bar type in Venus flytrap and out beside it put BBC because BBC is the producer of this particular video. But there's like a two minute video clip about the Venus flytrap and it talks about how um, the Venus flytrap can't get the nutrients that it needs through photosynthesis alone or through the soil. And so it has to obtain extra nutrients through capturing flies. And then it has these enzymes that um, break down the fly and then of course, um, liquefy it so that it can be absorbed by the venous flytrap and it gives it that extra boost of nutrient that it needs. Uh, again, really great example of how organisms can respond to their environment. Right, regulation. So organisms also need to be able to maintain something called homeostasis. So homeostasis is just a self-regulating process by which biochemical and biological systems maintain stability while adjusting to conditions that are optimal for survival. So there's lots of examples of this. A great example would be um, 
the ability to sweat. So if you go outside and you run around on a hot day, you might notice that you sweat. This is your body trying to maintain homeostasis. So your body temperature increases and then your body responds to that. Um, and so you sweat um, and that sweat carries heat energy away from your body so that your body temperature decreases in the process. Um, you can see some other examples of the body maintaining homeostasis uh, in humans. So temperature, we, we discussed, blood sugar, acidity levels in the human body, uh, blood pressure. I also put a picture of the desert hair on here because the desert hair actually has a really cool adaptation that is a great example of how um, this particular organism regulates its body temperature. So the desert hair has a really remarkable adaptation um, and it allows the organism to maintain its body temperature. And when the temperatures start to rise, the desert hair just regulates the flow of blood through its ears. And it does this by dilating blood vessels, um, which ultimately keeps the um, desert hair from overheating. So you can definitely check up on that and do some investigative research on that, um, but a really cool adaptation that is an example of regulation. All right, the last, um, the last characteristic of living things that we're going to talk about is adaptation. So living things can change over a long period of time, and those changes, which we're when we're referring to specific changes, we call those adaptations. Um, but over time, that process is known as evolution. Uh, but these adaptations help the organism to survive and ultimately reproduce, which is the goal. Uh, but there's lots of examples of adaptations. One of my favorite is the horn lizard, the ability of the lizard to shoot blood out of its eye when it detects a predator. Um, so if you will, after the video, I highly recommend you pause the video, do a YouTube search over um, the horn lizard adaptation. There's tons of videos that will come up, but check those videos out because um, the horn lizard actually has many adaptations, uh, but the coolest by far is the ability for the horn lizard to shoot blood out of its eye. So that ends our lesson. We have covered eight characteristics of living things. We also did like a quick overview of what we're going to see in the course this year, and I will see you in the next lesson.